when the mighty Virginia Cavaliers entered the Spectrum Center in North Carolina, they were the number one team in the country, the number one seed in the South bracket, and expected to continue the long line of first-seeded teams never to lose a first-round game. And their opponent was UMBC. Don't feel bad if you had to look up what those letters stood for, I sure did. Representing the America East Conference, the University of Maryland Baltimore County were simply supposed to show up, take the L, and go home with a nice bit of cash for simply making the tournament. But this became a perfect storm of clashing styles, and it left decidedly old school Virginia on its heels from the outset. The gauntlet was dropped when Daniel Aachen scored down low against Virginia's size, and the Cavs realized this wasn't going to be a cakewalk. And it all hinged on the way Virginia played defense. They never wanted to switch the pick and roll, but because they also high hedge every screen, the retriever simply slipped the screen, and it continually caught the Virginia bigs out of position. Forced to switch, senior Jairus Lyles brought his new man out on the perimeter, called for the isolation by clearing out that side, and getting right to the middle to draw free throws. UNBC had a tiny little point guard named KJ Mora, and his size never got in the way as they run a zipper cut into floppy. Mora has the option of choosing which side to cut to, and he gets an opening on the handoff, and this sharpshooter nails a shot he's practiced thousands of times. The defense Virginia plays is called pack line and I want you to watch how the ball screener sprints across the floor but slips the screen before any contact is made. His man is trained to hedge, so he's immediately way out of position and now the offense can force closeouts. The issue is that they're also trained to allow middle on their closeouts, and you can see Lamar has his choice of shooters out top or on the left wing for a wide open triple. UNBC was able to get Virginia's bigs out of position time and time again with their slipped ball screens, and it left them vulnerable to catch and drives from the perimeter all game long. The first play of the second half, we get that same zipper floppy, but they run their progression where the first screener on the left side cuts around the pin down on the right side. This side-to-side -side quick moving action continually pulled the bigs out in an attempt to hedge which forced the other defenders to move to that side to cover until they can get back in good position. Eventually, they find the big who is slow in closing out and, surprisingly, they don't help off the corner one pass away. But it's too late as Sherburn gets the tough and one. A lot of the damage was done in transition as well, and Virginia struggled to pick up their men in a timely manner, and they also seemed ill-prepared to defend shooters who were willing to pull from four and five feet behind the line. UNBC ran a very modern offense, even uncorking a couple of Spain pick and rolls, where a third player sets a back screen on the ball screener's man, and it completely confounded the defense as they simply didn't communicate, switch, or do much of anything as they allowed the ball handler easy lanes right to the rim for layups. More zipper floppy, and you can see when Mora comes all the way around for the handoff how easy it is for them to lure the big out of position. It opens the lift pass to the right wing, and watch the closeout. He's forcing the ball handler to the middle of the floor. Nigel Johnson gets caught ball watching, and he can't even get a hand up to contest this shot. Another simple step up screen after a ball reversal catches Isaiah Wilkins foolishly reaching in. No one even makes a move to rotate over, and it's another layup for Lyles. More pack line defensive principles that simply don't work against the modern offense. You can see the reaching in one pass away that could have been an open shot here. Then a ball reversal, which is defended well, as Virginia contains the ball to the perimeter. But allowing the ball handler to use the screen and high hedge with a big who is trying to step slide to keep in front? Of course he's going to get beat. They help one pass away off the corner. Johnson is wandering around leaving a wide open shooter on top. Lyles could even pass to a wide open Grant in the left corner, but he takes it himself for the nice runner. Let's take a second to look at Virginia's offense, which is called movers and blockers. And to put it nicely, I hate this offense. It's predicated on two players always screening and three players always cutting. If I were a blocker, I'd be bored out of my skull. And kudos to the Virginia bigs who are willing to sacrifice to play the position. 
but look at this possession and just keep your eye on number 33 on Virginia. It looks like he's stuck in NBA 2K cheese, just setting the same pin down over and over again like he's a wind-up toy or a part of a cuckoo clock. On this possession, watch 25, who sets a ball screen, then another ball screen, then a pin down, then has nothing else to do but try and find someone else to screen. The other huge issue with this alignment in general is that they almost always have two bigs hovering near both blocks. There is simply no spacing for the guards to drive to the basket. They struggled to score all year and it became very clear that once UMBC built a 13 point lead with only 8.5 minutes left, Virginia was going to have a heck of a time scoring 13 points the rest of the game. This led them to panic on offense, where they get an early three-pointer from Wilkins, someone who took only 17 of them all season. More fast break offense as they attack nicely on the catch from the wing. Kyle Guy picks up nobody and it's too late. Mora has just about iced the game. And a simple dribble pitch action catches Guy not switching, allowing middle penetration, and Lyles once again gets a layup, even getting whacked but no whistle on the play. Getting desperate with the clock ticking away, this simple ball screen pulls number 25 almost to half court. Modern day offenses aren't bothered very much by blasting the pick and roll. A simple swing pass forces the rotation and now watch the closeout. He's open to the ball to allow middle. The ball gets kicked in another closeout that allows middle. If you do that twice in a row, you're gonna get scored on most of the time. And with that, Virginia simply couldn't get anything going offensively, and that opened up all manner of shots for UMBC. The lead continued to swell until eventually, the biggest upset in the history of the NCAA tournament turned into a 20-point blowout. Not only was this an unprecedented loss, it also points out why playing Virginia's vaunted pack line defense is quickly becoming outdated. The blueprint has been laid out for winning teams in the modern era. The post area needs to be consistently open to spread the defense out to allow drives, and middle penetration will always open up three-point shots. These are two concepts that Tony Bennett and Virginia do not adhere to, and it allowed a very good coach in Dave Odom to identify these weaknesses, exploit them, and give us all a game for the ages. For even more great NBA content, subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit that bell and make sure you enable notifications to get our videos when they're fresh.